these are the four topics that we're going to kind of talk about here. So let's talk about the first one. Let's talk about art and science. This is sort of the agenda that I have for this first section. Okay. So let's just jump right into it. So a little bit of introduction to testing. Okay. I'm going to just slide through these animations. But the idea is that humans write software. We're not at a point right now where software writes software. Okay. Humans are imperfect. So therefore, because we write software, software is imperfect. So that, that's some of the basis that you're trying to pick. The idea also is that even if you wrote software perfect the first time, we have this nasty word scroll creep that kind of comes up and everybody kind of knows that. So even if you have your best set intentions, something's going to happen. Okay. So why do we test? We test because we want basically better software, right? And the idea is that we want high level of features, low defects, and the highest quality possible. So let's look at the problem set. The problem set is that we have limited resources, both time and people, and we can't run every test case. I'll get into that a little bit later on. And every test is a cost, okay? Depending on what's manual testing, automated. But the idea is that eventually the product is released. I have yet to work on a project that the goal was not to release a project. Maybe there are some out there, maybe academia or something like that, but the idea is that almost all the situations I've been, the goal has always been to release. Not all of them have exactly fully made it to the market, but the idea is the goal. There is some event horizon. It's not, it's not so far off where the line has turned into a dot, okay? So the idea here is we're talking about zero-sum games, okay? So that's some of the boundaries of what we're talking about testing. So let's talk about what do we kind of do. So let's, let's talk about optimizing here, right? So the idea is we want to get the best bang for our buck, but we want to facilitate the fixing of bugs, okay? And I'll talk a little bit later. But the idea here is the fact that even as testers, when we talk about testing versus quality assurance, the idea of testing is not to generate as many bugs as possible. The idea is the best, better quality. And all, uh, one of the problems we have is that, yeah, sure, you can have a whole bunch of bugs, but they don't get fixed. If you know about them, you don't have fixed. That's kind of having a little dirty secret that you don't tell anybody. It's not very useful to anybody else in the world, right? So a lot of time, we're talking about fixing things. Fixing things is, is the opposite side. It's the yin and the yang of the testing part. And also, we want to, you know, we want to avoid low return tasks. We, we just have this zero sum game. We want to optimize as much as possible. Sorry. How yes. do you define zero sum game? The idea is that there's a limited amount of resources, right? There's a winner and a loser type of thing where um, this is a lot about the game theory. That we, but the idea is here that eventually everything has a cost. So you do A, you may not be able to do B. Okay. If if Deborah wins here, Josh, you may lose. Okay, so there, there are certain situations, certain games we call out where you know it's not zero sum, so both you guys could be winners, or both you guys could be losers, but let's take the nice version that both of you guys are winners. But the idea here in testing is that we have a limited amount of resources. Generally speaking, what you're kind of looking at is if I, if I run this particular test, I may not be able to run this test, right? So, because if we could, if they weren't a zero sum game, that doesn't matter, we have infinite amount of time, let's just run all the tests. It doesn't really matter what order, because eventually I'm gonna get through them all. But that's not sort of realistic. So you have to uh, qualify the test and go, this test is more important than this test. Maybe we'll get to that other test, but this one we have to do because of... The Bang on. That's the actually application principle. We'll go over that a couple of slides ago. Okay, so we're definitely going back. That's actually exactly the direction that we're going to. So these are come out other concerns that, I don't know about you guys, especially mobile, we have extremely short de delivery cycles. You know, internet year, well, you know, maybe they call it, what, internet year a couple months? What's a mobile year? A couple days? I don't know. <laughs> really. The idea is that we're, we're even shorter when we focus on mobile. Uh, products release the App Store and Google Play all the time. Um, and, but you look at how many times you get a new version of uh, Windows, right? We're talking orders of magnitude difference, okay? Uh, we're talking about usually small dynamic teams. It's just, s s usually they're smaller. They've used maybe naturally a smaller app, but we finally functionally, we've also found that because of the way that the form factor, um, we usually have to use smaller teams because there's only so much code to kind of go around, right? There's different, you know, with old server client technologies, lots of different pieces, a lot of different things to go around. We're actually finding even with our mobiles, usually the teams are smaller and dynamic. Uh, rotating workforce and roles, I think everybody knows what that means. And integration of multiple products and technology every time new things are coming up. Uh, uh, new encryption algorithms, uh, new security, high cloud, things change all the time. I'll give you a good example, I think we have one of these products, security products we worked on and uh, I saw on the code and then you know everything that had to do with iOS was labeled, table was named iPhone something something something. And at that time, the iPhone was the, really the only iOS device. It was iPod Touch, but nobody was really doing that. Then when they got home, they, oh, we have to do iPad. 
Well, guess what? Now the nomenclature of, this, of the database, you couldn't figure out if iPhone meant just iPhone or iPhone meant iOS because they had created another one that says iPad. But in that case, some of them, some of them were denoted as just iPhone because it was predated the iPad. So you got some confusion there. So things change on you all the time, right? And you can't really predict that. Okay. Nothing else from the last couple of slides. Think of this graph here. So hopefully pictures worth a thousand where this kind of helps you, right? So the idea is like, with knowing nothing about testing, you're sort of on this kind of curve here, this first one, okay? So this is sort of time and resources, it's number of defects. The idea here is we want to change the way that this curve works. What do we want to do is make it more efficient. Same amount of people, same amount of resources. Let's see how we can affect that. Because I can't change time <laughs> and I can't give you more people for your project, but hopefully we can empower the people who are already on your project, okay? So this is kind of slide I picked up. A little bit of art versus science. This is uh, kind of my view of it. Um, this is from Oxford Dictionary, but the idea is they say science is the intellect and the practical activity encompassing the systemic study of structure and behavior, physical, and natural world through observation and experiment. Um, Oxford's definition of art in the same sort of one. I picked the fourth one, which is art is a skill at doing something specified, typically typically one acquires through practice. So what does that all mean, plain speak? For me, that what it means is science is, when I talk about art versus science, I'm talking about science, I mean the, the academic part of the understanding, like how, how do we get that in your head? Art is more the practical, the empirical learning experience, stuff like that. So what I'm gonna try to do is, hopefully it makes it easier for you guys to digest. I've tried to put in some of the theoretical knowledge on one hand, and then I wanna give you guys, which would probably be even more useful to you guys is the practical experience logic that I got that I didn't know before until I did it. Does that sort of make sense? Okay, so let's talk about the science of testing then. Okay, so epistemology, does this, everybody kind of know what this means? Why are testing people talking about this? But the idea is here, it's, it's the knowledge of science, right? So we talk about things like, you know, what is knowledge? How is knowledge acquired? What do people actually know and stuff like that? And how do we know? Well, it turns out, to be a good tester, you should probably read this, uh, psych this, uh, sorry, this, this textbook here, the psych textbook. Well, not really. But this actually, ironically, is actually one of the reading lists for, 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 for uh, testing. But the idea here is it creates something that's important. It actually is the foundation of the testing what we know, know what we know, okay? So what happens is, uh, I think, uh, Jonathan Berenkin, I came up with this idea here. And so I'm going to kind of come on a tangent. I'll show you guys how to bring this back, but bear with me for a couple seconds as we talk about this. The idea is here, people have the search inference algorithm built in within themselves, okay? So the idea is, uh, as an individual, what I do is I create an assertion. That might be a stereotype, that might be a prejudice, that might be some idea I can conjure up. The idea is what I do is I go out in the world and I test that validity and then I update my understanding. For example, if this, this, this podium here, right, if I, I, I would say, I come up and say, hey, I think it's kind of sturdy, right? So in my mind, I, I act as if it's kind of sturdy. And then if I lean on it, and if I actually fall down or fall over, I would update my, I would change the way my world view. I say, hey, that's not so sturdy. So the next time I would come on, I wouldn't lean on the podium, right? Do you understand that? So we do this millions, millions of times a day, but you know, like people necessarily think like that, right? So let's take a look at this, and I'll show you why it's important to test it. So, what makes something a car? <coughs> Ideas? Well, how about this one? Because since we're a quiet group here. Does it have four wheels? Well, what about two bicycles? Two bicycles four, has four wheels. Does it have four doors? Well, does a minivan or coupe still count as a car? It may or may not. This is the idea here. Is that, but what, you know, is a car something powered by an engine? Well, what about a broken down car? Or a car in a, 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 a car yard? Is that still a car if you take the engine out? Okay, so the idea here is, what I wanted to get you guys thinking about is a little bit of, a lot of time we were right into it, but some of the theoretical science knowledge has to, if you take a step back and you have an understanding of how we think about things, how our understanding is, they actually color the way you test. And having an understanding of that, you'll kind of see that a little bit later. 